Do not pass by failed Indiana Jones, who from early childhood dreamed of exploring the pyramids, excavating ancient tombs, and finding Atlantis. A real gift awaits you. I have prepared a video dedicated to the facts from the world of archaeology, including photos and stories about incredible artifacts from around the world. Magnificent Handmade Door Law Made by Frank Krolewski in 1911 in gold, silver, and bronze, based on the fairy tale Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Frank Krolewski took seven years to create a very intricate door lock based on the fairy tale Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. In 1911, it was completed, and in 1915, this door lock received a gold medal at the Panama Pacific International Exhibition. The door lock is currently on display at the Art Institute of Chicago. Near the door lock, the museum posted the following information. Frank Krolewski, American, born in Germany 1870-1911. Iron lock with inlays of gold, silver, bronze, and copper on a wooden base 20 by 20 and 8 inches. How the inhabitants of the Arctic Circle have protected their eyes from snow blindness for over 4,000 years. Sunglasses for us are a fashion accessory from the 20th century, but in fact, glasses that protect the eyes from bright light appeared in antiquity. They are the same age as the Egyptian pyramids. True, such glasses were not invented at all in hot countries, but in the harsh Arctic. The Alaska natives and Chukchi have been using snow goggles for thousands of years. This is a simple but very effective analog of sunglasses, helping to protect the ice from photocaratus snow blindness. Everyone is well aware of how insidious ultraviolet light can be, but in the conditions of the far north, when everything around is covered with snow, its negative impact is intensified. The rays of the sun reflect from the snow covering can lead to a burn of the cornea of the eye, and it is completely imperceptible to a person. Even scattered sunlight where there is snow can be dangerous. Northern artisans make snow glasses from a variety of materials. Spruce wood or walrus ivory was best suited for these purposes, but in extreme cases leather could also be suitable. If they weren't there, glasses could even be made from birch bark, algae, and grass. All snow goggles are arranged, regardless of the material used. They consist of a mask that fits snugly around the face and ties that are attached to the head. One or more narrow horizontal slits were made in the mask. When glasses are on the face, light only passes through the slits. In some cases, the inside of the mask was painted black from soot. This is done so that glare does not appear inside the snow goggles. The width of the slits played a big role, since it depended on how extensive the field of view would be, and the ropes were made from the tendons of animals. As you already understood, snow glasses did not have a single standard. Each artisan made them as he saw fit, and it was not easy to find frames that were the same in style, shape, and size. Sometimes glasses were decorated or modified for maximum comfort. Scientists have found models with edges trimmed with cloth or rabbit fur. Although Chukchi and Alaska native snow goggles look archaic and funny, they are the ancestors of modern sunglasses. Interestingly, in translation from the language of the Canadian Inuit, the name of the snow glasses Igaaka means exactly sunglasses. Giraffes Dabis In the heart of the Sahara is the Tenor Desert, a flat, waterless wilderness whose name in the language itself translates as emptiness. We are more familiar with the Arabic word with the same meaning, Sara Sugar. There are more than 800 petroglyphs on the far mountain slope of air, including a unique image of Tatal Fatman. Christian Dapui first documented Dabu giraffes in 1987. Behind, much attention was paid to this area, and since then more than 820 rare stone images have been discovered here. About 700 petroglyphs contain images of animals, including buffaloes, ostriches, antelopes, lions, camels, and rhinos. About 60 petroglyphs kill people. Another 160 have not been fully deciphered. This is a collection of two large images of giraffes. 
These large petroglyphs are carved into a flat rock of weathered sandstone and are between 6,000 and 8,000 years old. Various methods have been found to create rock art, including scraping and smoothing areas, deep engraving of contours, and fine engraving of two to three depth points visible throughout the body. For such ancient petroglyphs, these data are really impressive. Besides, these petroglyphs themselves are huge. It is thought that there are to increases in male and female consumption. The larger male is in front and the female is smaller and stands behind. The length of the largest giraffe is almost 5. For meters or 6.35 meters if measured from the tip of the ears to the tip of the hind leg. Its petroglyph in the world and the world's largest rock carving of an animal evidences this. Curiously, each giraffe has an engraved line running from its mouth to a similar figure. This symbolizes the relationship between families and people. Dabu giraffes and other petroglyphs are found about halfway between the cities of Agadez and Arli, on the western side of the Air Mountains in north-central Niger. There is a road between the two cities and the petroglyphs are located a few kilometers to the west of it. There is an aluminum cast of the Dabas giraffe at the Agadez airport, a village in Iran that is 700 years old. In the northeast of Iran, there is a small village that is already about 700 years old. It is located near the city of Osku. Here the houses are carved right into the rocks of the mountains. These dwellings are already 700 years old and residents still live in them. They ride here exclusively on donkeys since cars are prohibited on the roads of the village. Each house is a separate rock and it is very difficult to believe that all this was done artificially. These unusual dwellings have such a bizarre shape. Turkic troops settled here for the first time. It was a convenient line of defense and since it was very expensive to build a new fortress and there really wasn't anything like it, shelters were cut down right in the rocks. Today, residents of the 700-year-old village, kindly and free of charge, let all tourists into their mansions. They can give them tea and even leave them overnight. Shoes designed in the 1920s by cattle thief named Mad Tex Hazel to cover their tracks when stealing cows. Chinese bronze sword with a handle inlaid with turquoise and rock crystal. Warring States period, 4th, 2nd century BC. The mystery of the amethyst vase from Assyria. Archaeologists have discovered an amazingly beautiful vase, which is more than 3,000 years old. According to historians, its creator lived in Assyria at the turn of the 9th and 8th centuries BC. Surely, you ask, well, a vase, so what? and that it is still unknown how it was created at all. The fact is that the material from which it is made is a kind of quartz, amethyst. For example, today, with the help of modern technologies, it will be problematic but real to make such a vase. Now fast forward to the 8th century BC. Wars, diseases, famine, and lack of high technology. It doesn't fit in my head with the help of which and how the ancient brilliant master created this miracle. Numerous studies of the artifact did not allow to come to a consensus. So, it is believed that in order to create such an object, the ancient Assyrians would need grinding diamond tools, chromium oxide, diamond paste, grinding on a free abrasive. Because of these details, many historians consider it impossible to create this vase in those distant times. In addition to the obscure method of making the artifact, the stability of the vase is also a mystery. Its bottom repeats the top of a chicken egg, there is no flat bottom. It is round and has almost no contact with the surface. However, the vase is worth it. But it is worth putting more than five grains of sand on one of its edges and it will collapse. How an ancient artisan manually created this artifact with such precision is anyone's guess. Additionally, a detailed study of the vase showed that without the ultra-thin diamond drill which is used today, it is impossible to make the finest holes in the handles. And if we assume that it was in the hands of a master, then it would take him more than five years to make one such hole if we assume that he will only be engaged in manual drilling for 15 hours a day. As you can imagine, this is unlikely. But in this case, who and how created this wonderful artifact more than 3,000 years ago? Basilica Cistern, 
fourth century human made miracle cistern. Usually, when most people mention sites, images of pompous palaces, ancient fortresses, or majestic cathedrals come to mind, but the Basilica Cistern falls out of the general range of ancient monuments because this particular artificial miracle is a 4th century reservoir, and this most mysterious, exciting engineering and architectural creation is located underground in the very historical center of modern Istanbul. The Basilica Cistern is of unprecedented beauty and evidence of developing the scientific thought of ancient civilizations. This is the most mysterious and unique attraction that Istanbul inherited from Byzantine architects who created an unusual underground reservoir. Back in 306, the Basilica cistern began to be built on the orders of the Roman Emperor Constantine who decided to provide Byzantium Constantinople with a supply of drinking water. Special illumination of the columns makes the underground vault a mystical place. For two whole centuries, thousands of slaves created the unprecedented beauty of underground structures, which can really be compared with the grandeur of the royal palace. It is especially surprising how it was possible to arrange a system of water conduits underground, through which water came from natural sources located in the Belgrade forest, which is almost 20 kilometers from the city itself. Having overcome 50 to steps, visitors enter the underground palace, which served as an ordinary reservoir. Interesting, to date, it is known that there are 40 underground reservoirs under Istanbul among which the Basilica Cistern is the largest. But the researchers suggest that this is not the final figure, so the search work continues. The length of the Basilica Cistern reaches 140 meters and is located at a depth of 10 to 12 meters. The ancient reservoir surprises with its truly royal scale and gigantic size, reaches 140 meters in length and 70 meters in width. The total area is 9.8 thousand square meters with a water volume of 100,000 cubic meters. Naturally, such a reservoir could easily provide a city with drinking water in a dry year or during a long siege. The construction of the largest underground cistern in Constantinople began in the 4th century. As it became known, the underground reservoir got its unusual name Basilica because on the surface, just above the cistern, there was a temple that had a symbolic structure called a basilica, which literally means place of worship. It was a rather significant place for the inhabitants of the city because in those distant times religious buildings were built on the central squares and they themselves turned into cultural and educational centers in which schools operated and libraries were organized. More than 7,000 slaves participated in the construction of an underground reservoir, which lasted almost 200 years. The unique beauty of the underground reservoir deserves special attention because it is not for nothing that the Turks call it Yerebeten Sarai Yerebeten Sarnici, an underground palace. To see this unprecedented beauty with your own eyes, you need to overcome 50 to stone steps, and then 12 rows of majestic columns will appear before your eyes, each of which has 28 marble pillars 8 meters high. The arched vaults of the Basilica Cistern preserved the ancient brickwork Istanbul. And the most amazing thing is that among the 336 columns you will not find the same. They are made of different types of marble and brought from different temples, and not only Byzantine ones. Arched cross vaults, lined with thin brick plinth, hold the cistern ceiling and for meter-thick walls lined with refractory bricks and treated with a unique waterproofing solution have supported the building for more than 1,500 years, but almost no water remained in it. The columns for the construction of the underground reservoir were brought from temples destroyed by the Byzantines during the wars. But this is not surprising because the Turks, who captured the city in 1453, practically did not use the reservoir and it not only fell into decay, they forgot about it. Over time, it was discovered again, and in a very interesting way, a French traveler noticed how the townspeople fished in their gardens and the resulting dips under the floorboards, right in the house or in ordinary wells. They were the first to suggest that it was in this place that the Basilica Cistern, which is mentioned in ancient manuscripts, was located. But the authorities completely ignored this fact and did so for several centuries in a row. 
These aqueducts carried water to Constantinople. Only in the middle of the last century did scientists achieve that this unique architectural monument, which clearly testified to the remarkable talent of not only architects, but also engineers who calculated the very design of the cistern and the water supply system through the galleries and aqueducts, Constantinople began to recover. Given that the Basilica cistern has been inactive for so many years, tons of silt and dirt have accumulated in it, so it took a very long time to put everything in order and organize a safe area for excursions. In 1987, after a long cleaning and restoration, the Basilica Cistern was opened as a museum in Istanbul. Since 1987, after the official opening of the Basilica Cistern, it has become the most exciting and mysterious attraction in Istanbul. The organizers of the underground museum took special care of the atmosphere prevailing in this majestic and beautiful place. For this, subdued lighting of all columns and the vaulted ceiling was organized and soothing music and Enhanced by excellent acoustics, creates the impression of an unreality of what is happening. The column of tears is decorated with antique curls resembling eyes, from which drops of water slowly flow. Naturally, in this underground kingdom, among the 336 columns, there are those that are most popular and, as a result, overgrown with legends. One of the most popular attractions is the Weeping Column, decorated with amazing carvings that resemble either the eyes or the tail of a peacock. At the same time, it is the only column with which water flows in a thin layer and therefore has a green color. Moreover, eyewitnesses claim that it seems that green plants of a bizarre shape did not grow millions of years ago. Such an unusual view not only attracts tourists, they come up with a special magical ritual, after which the most cherished desire came true. There is no end to those wishing to make their most cherished wish. In an accessible place on this column, there is a small hole into which lovers of every Thing magical simply stick their finger in without lifting their palms from the surface of the support manage to scroll their hand 360 degrees. In the underground museum, a pool of desires was designed, in which there is no gold at all, but there are still fish designed to fulfill dreams. There are two more columns of interest. They are located at the far end of the Basilica Cistern. Approaching them, the fact dumbfounded visitors that they were looking at the heads of the Gorgon Medusa, which serve as a support for two columns. No, they do not frighten modern people, but surprise them with their position. One of the unique columns of the Basilica Cistern is decorated with the head of the Gorgon Medusa, which lies on its side. The face of one is rotated 90 degrees delivered from the Temple of Apollo at Didyma, located on the shores of the Aegean Sea and the second one is completely upside down but where it was delivered from remains a mystery because the expression on her face does not look like any of the usual images. One version says that the builders arranged it to neutralize the mythical abilities of the Gorgon Medusa to turn people into stone according to another version. In this way the ancestors tried to carry out preventive and disinfecting measures. As you know, in those days such amulets served as protection against diseases womb. But whatever the motive for ranging the columns in this way. All this underground splendor causes indescribable delight among visitors because there are not so many such mysterious and exciting places on the planet left. Temple Theater Complex discovered only in the early 2000s at Mani San Nicola in Pietraverano, province of Caserta, Italy. One of the most beautiful and rare examples of temple theaters discovered in southern Italy, located on the top of Mani San Nicola in the village of San Eremo in the municipality of Pietraverano. At an altitude of about 500 meters above sea level, an ancient sanctuary was discovered consisting of a temple and a theater located on to terraces at different heights, the scenography of which is further emphasized by an unusual panorama. It was built around the 1st century AD, when Rome had already defeated the Samnites quite some time ago. The two elements of the complex, the temple and the theater, the structure of which, according to archaeologists, is the result of a single project conceived, respectively, from the very beginning of its construction, are located onto terraces at different heights, on the lower one, 
the theater from which a semicircular niche has been preserved suitable to accommodate several hundred people built along the natural slope of the hill after the models of Greek theaters, significant examples of which we find in southern Italy and stages located on the southern edge of the terrace and provided with for semicircular buttresses. On the upper terrace, the remains of a rectangular temple are visible, consisting of a front space pronounced with for columns tetra style and three interior rooms cella, which housed statues of the gods. On the sides, at the level of the front columns, there were terrain tanks, of which only the eastern one survived. A little downstream from the temple, the remains of an observation tower reappeared, located on a quadrangular base, the design of which, likely, is of the same age as the temple and theater complex. The discovery of graves found in some rooms of the complex made it possible to date the abandonment of the original purpose as early as the 2nd century AD. Very little remains of the original building building, and it seems that already in the 2nd century AD the temple theater ceased to fulfill its functions. In particular, the upper part of the temple probably collapsed after centuries of desolation. During excavations at this site, tiles, cups, oil lamps, and other items from the temple were found. In general, for centuries this area was visited mainly by shepherds who had little interest in construction. The theater and temple complex in Petraverano was a kind of landmark for the surrounding population who then lived in this territory. It was a truly powerful symbol of power and collective identity. Football match at the 2,000-year-old Roman arena in Pula, Croatia. It can be recognized that this is the oldest stadium where football has ever been played. The arena was built in the 1st century BC. This is the arena of Pula in Croatia, the only surviving arena with four towers and all three Roman architectural orders. At the same time, regarding its size, the amphitheater occupies the sixth place in the world among similar structures. Interestingly, it is not protected by UNESCO. It is also interesting that the same emperor built the arena. They went just to Croatia. It was a distant Roman village. Photos from the football tournament of four teams, two Bayern legends of the 1990s and 2000s and two Croatian teams. Elber and Alec played for the Germans. Pletikosa, Kranjkar, Simic, Šimunic, and even played for the Croats. Judging by the photos, it was something like a mini football. This arena even hosted the hockey matches, stone chains of Indian temples. Since ancient times, India has been considered the most mysterious and mystical country in the world. This country is shrouded in a dense veil of secrecy, and today, a state with a population of 1.3 billion people is subject to some of its own, incomprehensible to Europeans, spiritual laws. India has many ancient temples with amazing architecture. One of the secrets of ancient India is the city of Kanchipuram Konki, the ancient religious and cultural center of South India called the city of a thousand Gopuras. The foundation of Kanchipuram was lost in the mists of time. Xuanzang, a Chinese Buddhist monk and philosopher during the Tang dynasty, spoke enthusiastically about ancient Kanchipuram. For a millennium and a half, Kanchipuram served as the capital of the Tamil Pallavas and Chola's dynasties. Kanchipuram was the largest center of Buddhist and Jain learning. It is believed that it was in Konki that Bodhidharma, the first patriarch of Chin Buddhism, the founder of the Chin Zen teaching, was educated. Kanchipuram's main temple, the Varadaraja Temple, is one of the three main Vishnu sanctuaries in southern India. The place is considered so holy that only Hindus are allowed to enter the temple. In the sacred pond of the temple, called Ananda Tirtham, underwater in a silver chest is a statue of Vishnu which is taken out of the water once every 40 years for 48 days after the pond is completely drained. Legend has it that this wooden statue was placed in the temple of Varadaraja by Brahma himself, the god of creation in Hinduism, and that the statue was created by Vishvakarman, the creator of the universe. A distinctive feature of the Varadaraja temple are huge stone chains hewn carved from solid stone. Chains hang from the columns of a huge open hall, Mandapas. In the city of Yelander, Karnataka, there is a very simple Gurizwara temple built in the 16th century during the reign of the Vijayanagar Empire. It has a sanctuary, a mandapa supported by granite columns, and an unusual main entrance. 
The sanctuary is dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva. The walls of the entrance are richly decorated with reliefs depicting scenes from the Puranas, texts of ancient Indian literature. An unusual decoration of the entrance is, as in the Varadaraja temple, stone chains. Stone chains are one of the mysteries of ancient India. Who, when, how, and most importantly, with what help they managed to do this work, cut chains from solid stone remains a mystery. There is nothing like it anywhere else in the world. Chains made of solid stone blocks are found only in India. What secrets did the ancient masters have and what tools did they have in their hands? Anon, thousand-year-old temples completely carved from monolithic rocks, solid stone chains, basalt columns as if carved on a huge lathe, skillful stone carving, a monolithic basalt pillar, granite chariots, singing columns playing with sandalwood stakes, basalt sculptures as if cast. Experts are convinced that the builders in ancient India were not fiction. They really existed, but for some reason all the data about them has been lost. 3,300-year-old Egyptian hairstyles. Researchers working at a cemetery in an ancient city which we now call Amarna have discovered several individuals whose hairstyles are still intact. This image shows a woman who was buried with an incredibly elaborate hairstyle that includes 70 extensions fastened in different layers and heights on her head. She and the other individuals in this photo gallery would have lived more than 3,300 years ago. This woman's gray hair appears to have been dyed orange-red. A flowering plant called henna may have been used to achieve this. Researchers are not completely certain that the colors seen in this image are the result of hair dye and research is being conducted to determine this. If this woman did dye her hair orange-red, it may have been because her hair was turning gray. Research has revealed that, at Amarna, curling hair around the ears was popular. This image shows a fine example of this. This person was buried with a hairstyle that includes many extensions. A textile can also be seen that may have been used as a skull cap. Archaeologist Jolanda Boss, pictured here, has been studying the hairstyles found at Amarna. This image shows her working on one of the skulls. Some of the hairstyles were found in a brittle condition while, in other instances, the preservation was excellent. To conserve the hairstyles, paper was wrapped around the skulls both vertically and horizontally. The paper was then closed with tape. This wrapping protected the hair, preventing it from shifting, while allowing researchers to continue studying other aspects of the skull, such as the teeth. Amarna was built more than 3,300 years ago by Akhenaten. He was a revolutionary pharaoh who focused Egyptian religion around the worship of the sun disk, the Aten. The city was abandoned not long after he died. Excavations at Amarna are ongoing and are being carried out by the Amarna Project, supported by the Amarna Trust. This image shows part of the ancient city. Friends, this is only the first part of a video about amazing finds in the world of archaeology. There will be a second part soon. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All the best.